Well, TFC and Faith Nation, here we are on a very, very special day, and I have a special word, a new series that I'm starting on today called Living Beyond. We're going to talk about different facets of life, how God has engineered you to live beyond some moments. And so today I want you to lean in real close, uh, take copious notes, of course, tag somebody, share this, but most importantly, hear what the Spirit is saying and make this a part of your everyday life. I want to pray for you right now in this moment, and then we'll jump into the word of God. Father, we honor you and we thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you so much for your mercy. Thank you so much for your son, Jesus, and his sacrifice. So today, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you uh, uh, tailor make this word for every single person right now. We know that there's some people that are watching that need to start or reunite an authentic relationship with you. Today is the perfect day to do that. Nothing will stop them. We know also, Father, there are some people that need a life-giving church, uh, whether they are physically here or in the digital space. Nothing will stop them. Today is the perfect day for them to join the Faith Center. But most of all, this is a gathering of victorious believers in Satan. You're absolutely defeated in every area of life. I thank you, Father, that I have clear thoughts, clear speech, so the gospel will be explained clearly in Jesus' name. Will everybody say amen? Come on, let's make our faith confession for the word of God. You should see it right now on your screen. The applied word of God will change my life instantly. I'm both a hearer and a doer of the word. I live to please God, therefore I walk by faith and not by sight. I will possess my promises. I will pursue with passion. I will prosper as my soul prospers. My faith is my evidence. In Jesus' name, will you say amen? If you are ready for the word, will you type, I'm ready? I have a special request. I know many times, depending on what platform that you are on, you just really soak the word in. But if you're on Facebook today I, or YouTube, I really want you to be comment heavy today because it's going to reinforce what I'm saying to you in the word of God. So if you're ready, type, I'm ready, and let's get into the word of God on today, talking about living beyond beyond tough moments, living beyond tough moments. I want to start with this statement right here. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. Will you say that with me? Tough times don't last. Tough people do. In Matthew 26 and 36, I want you to see the setup of the scripture of Jesus is now going about to enter into crucifixion as we celebrate his resurrection today. But there will be no resurrection without a crucifixion. So we want to back up and look at what transpired on the way to him being uh, crucified. And that is a time of prayer that he has in the Garden of Gethsemane. And it starts in Matthew 26, 36, it says, then Jesus cometh with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto his disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him here, the disciples, Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, that's James and John, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he said unto them, watch this, my soul is exceeding, exceeding sorrowful, even unto death, tarry or wait here and watch with me, stay awake and, and pray with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed saying, oh father, he's talking to God now, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. What that means is I don't want to drink of this bitter cup that I have to call crucifixion. If it's possible, I know your plan. I know I'm supposed to be the perpetuation for man's sins, but if it's possible, let some other thing happen. Let somebody else do it. Come up with another way that I don't have to go through this. But then he gets to a part where he says, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Let's look at three simple things that we need to see out of the scriptures here. Number one, Jesus goes to pray. Jesus goes to pray. 
And I want you to see here, a prayer life is essential for success and struggle. I'm going to say that again. A prayer life, it's essential for success and struggle. Sometimes we only want to pray when things are tough, but even when things are really, really good, a prayer life is essential and definitely in times where things are challenging. What am I saying? Man should always pray. There should never be a time that you are not praying. Number two, here's what I want you to see out of the scriptures. Focus on the father. Say that with me. Focus on the father, not your circle. Focus on the father, not your circle. Here's why. Because this season is about you and the father. Jesus has 12 disciples, but then he's able to go and pray with his inner core, which is three. But even his focus had to be on the father in this moment and not on his circle. I don't know who I'm talking to in this moment. I know I'm talking to about 50 of you guys that your friendship, your circle is not surrounding you the way that you thought they should or supporting you. That's why your focus should be on the father. You're not taking a test right now. You're taking a final exam and it's between you and the father. Number three, I want you to see this. His faith was being compromised by his feelings. His faith was being compromised. If you look now when the re I've read the verse in verse number uh, 39 it says oh my father if it be possible what do you mean if it be possible Jesus your faith is being compromised because you told us in Matthew 19 and 26 you said but Jesus beheld them and said unto them with men this is impossible come close but with God all things are possible don't allow your faith to be compromised by your feelings. Let's look at three simple things to do. Number one, go pray. Say that with me. Go pray. I have a prayer schedule that I've been using for some weeks now. I adopted it from my friend and, and made it my own. I pray at 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 2 p.m., 5 p.m., and 8 p.m. I put these reminders in my phone, and when that goes off, it's time for me to pray. When you're in a very tough time in life or being sensitive to the things of God, you need to have an active prayer life. That's 9 a.m., 12 p.m., uh, 2 p.m., 5 p.m., and 8 p.m. You need to put those reminders in your phone and be intentional. Jesus was able to get beyond the tough time because he was able to go pray first. You will not get to the next level when you want to pray in the trouble. You need to pray before the trouble comes. You need to pray before the blessing comes. You need to pray your way through things in the struggle and in success is when you need to pray. Number two, what we need to do is answer this question. Where are you? Jesus was able to answer the question and say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a little frustrated. I, I, I don't want to go through this. And I think sometimes our lack of honesty allows God's hands to be tied because Christians are infamous for giving church answers even though we're hurting on the inside. Someone will ask you how you doing. You'll say I'm blessed and highly favored. No, 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 no. You want to be blessed and highly favored but right now you frustrated and you need somebody to help you ignite your faith. My question is where are you? Number three, what we need to see right here is you need to reconnect connect to the source to regain your focus. It was after he prayed that his fight came back. He was saying, hey, I don't want to do this. I really don't want to go through it. But when he prayed, he got to the place where he said, not my will, but thou will be done. I declare right now that as somebody right now where you're watching this, you pray, your fight is going to come back. Jesus, now he's at the entrance of the crucifixion, which is the toughest time of his life. And we're talking about uh, living beyond tough moments. What do you do when you're about to face a challenge? What do you do? Do you normally throw your hands up? Do you stress out? Do, do you drink? 
do, do, do you go off on people? What do you do when you're about to face a challenge? How do you get beyond life's greater moments of challenge? Because what happens in life, if we're going to look at how we get beyond, we need to see that life's challenges are represented by five factors. Let's look at these. Number one, the call of God. God, he's elevating you to a higher place. And when God calls you to a higher place, sometimes it, you have to embrace challenges. God told Abram in Genesis 12, hey, I want you to leave your country. I want you to leave your kindred, your family, and I want you to go to a place that I'll show you, which is Canaan. Well, when he left, the first thing he entered into was a famine. Have you ever listened to the voice of God in the direction that he took you didn't look like him? And have you ever listened to the voice of God or operated in faith? And the first thing that you do is walk out into trouble. I had some people within our church say, pastor, you were teaching us about hearing the voice of God and we walking by faith and not by sight. But since we've been hearing the voice of God, it seems like all things have been coming down on us at one time. You not by yourself. That's God calling you to a better place and you better go. Here's what represents challenge in our life. Number two, human error. Sometimes mistakes bring challenges. Number three, this is the one we like to use a lot, satanic attack. We blame Satan for stuff that he hadn't even done, but he does attack us, his devices and his schemes to destroy your faith. How do challenges come, pastor? Uh, and what, what is represented? The challenges of the times. Sometimes in the life cycle of the world, there are just some challenges that come within the earth's realm. And then number five, I want you to hang on to this one. It's for his glory. Why do challenges come in your life? It's for his glory. Watch this. You have to be a poster child. I love this. For God to use for others to see that he can be glorified. That's exactly what happened to Job. And some of you all are experiencing a Job-like experience because God is using you to show other people that he will get the glory out of your life. What will happen? You will be tested. You will be tested. And without testing, there is no promotion. You will be tempted. Some of you are going to be tempted by the enemy and you're going to be tempted to give up, but don't you give up. I'm talking about living beyond tough moments in your life. You will be transitioned after you've been tested and proved that you can pass the test. After you've been tempted and resisted the temptation, you will be transitioned from where you are to what you've seen on the canvas of your imagination. But then I like this one. You will have a testimony. There is no testimony without first passing a test. Remember this, tough times don't last. Tough people do. Say that with me. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. I want you to look at in Psalms 23 and 4. We read this a lot. But as we're talking about overcoming challenges and tough times, look at what the word of the Lord says. It says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Stop, 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 stop. Overcoming tough moments. This does not sound like a glorious moment. You're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I just said for God to get the glory. This is not a route that we would have chosen for ourselves, but this is the route that God chose for you to get the glory. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Watch this. I have to stay in faith. I will fear no evil. Say that to yourself. I will fear no evil. Come on, say it one more time. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. But check this out. Before you go through the valley, you must be restored. Now, that was Psalms 23 and 4 saying, yea, though I walk through the valley. Well, how do we get through the valley? We're talking about Easter resurrection today. Well, how did Jesus get through the resurrection? He had a prayer life. How are you going to get through the valley? Let me show you something right here. It says for his glory. That's what I'm pointing out. It's for his glory. Verse number three says, he restoreth my soul. Stop right there. God already knows in order for you to get through this thing, he's going to have to restore your mind, your will, your imagination, your emotions, and your intellect. He already knows you need a Gatorade infusion to your spirit. He already knows you need a V8 infusion. He already knows you need a 20-hour energy. He already knows that he needs to crank up the Holy Spirit, so he's going to restore your soul, and then he's going to lead you in the path 
path of righteousness. Watch this. But the path of righteousness sometimes is through the valley. Woo! Sometimes the path of righteousness is through some scary stuff. Sometimes the path of righteousness is through some people talking about you. Sometimes the path of righteousness is from people walking away on you. Sometimes the path of righteousness is people giving up on you. Sometimes the path of righteousness is for you to be lied on, keep your mouth closed, because if you open your mouth, you're going to mess it all up. Am I talking to somebody? But when you see the scripture here, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness. But why does he do it? For his name's sake, I want to tell about three people right now. The reason that God is leading you the way that he's leading you is for his glory because his name is on the line. This is not about you, even though you think it's about you because you feel everything. But no, God is using you as a poster child for his name's sake. That's a praise moment right there. But some of you, my God, have forgotten what God has done for you in the past year and a half because you have, have um, are feeling where you are some of you have forgotten what God has done you wouldn't be standing today if he didn't restore your soul 365 days ago you wouldn't still be in your right mind today if he didn't do some work on you in 2019 you need to give praise to God not for where you are whoa but what he did prior to the the, the crucifixion of your life the tough times. you need to thank God for what he did back then that's allowing you to stand right now because if you keep standing you're gonna have your resurrection moment in a minute if you just keep your focus and say thank you God you chose me as a poster child to make it through this tough time but you must understand it's for his glory say that with me it's for his glory come on say that with me it's for his glory here's the setup in this chapter right here and we're almost done Jesus, he's betrayed by Judas. In this chapter, Jesus, he has his Passover with his disciples. In this chapter, Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. In this chapter, then he foretells, Peter, you're going to deny me. And finally, regain strength through, proud, through, through the prayer in the garden. That's what happens just in this chapter. This is what's leading up to the garden. What are you saying? You lose someone close. Judas was close to Jesus. Then you have your last meal with your family. Then you know before it happens, watch this, that someone close to you is about to walk away from you and you go into prayer to connect with your power source. Here's what I want to ask you. Out of all the challenges that Jesus went through, we can see that he was strong enough to enter into prayer. How many of you in these moments right now in triumph or challenge are strong enough to enter into prayer? It's going to be your prayer life that brings you out. The children of Israel didn't get out because they were complaining. You will never birth God's purpose in your life being one that feels frustrated or being one that feels miserable or being one that's in your feelings. Today is about Jesus getting up out of the grave and you too can get out up out of your tough times and your challenges, but you must embrace prayer life. You'll never get up if you're not first connected with the source that keeps you grounded. You'll never get up if you're not first connected to God. Jesus said, if I'm going to be resurrected in three days, I know I got to connect to my source. I know I got to connect to my source because watch this, prayer was not about his pain. <laughs> it was about his power source. Stay connected. Somebody say that with me. Stay connected. Let's look at our pastor's points and we're going to be finished today. I hope you're enjoying this. I'm having a ball. Hebrews 12 and 2 is where we're going to take our pastor's points from today as we're talking about living beyond tough moments. And so what I want you to see right here as we close this out, Hebrews 12 and 2, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, watch this, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I'm going to read that again. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Looking, looking, not what's going on. I'm looking unto Jesus. Not, not looking at myself. Looking unto Jesus. Not looking at who's wronged me. Looking unto Jesus. 
the author and finisher of my faith, not my feelings. He's the author and finisher of my faith. Who for the joy that was set before him, because of the joy that was set before him, he was able to go through the cross, huh, despise the stuff that people did to him to shame him. And now, because he was able to do that, he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Here's my pastor's points for you as we finish this message out. Number one, fix your focus. Fix your focus. What do you mean fix your focus? Fix your focus because you're looking at the wrong things. You need to look under Jesus. He's the author and finisher. See, he's the beginning and he's the one that knows where the finish line is. He's the one that if you look to him and stay focused on him because he's already gone through it. He knows exactly how close you are even though you feel further than you really are. Fix your focus. Number two, we need to get your joy back. Somebody say that with me. Get your joy back. Yeah, you've allowed circumstances and situations and people and, and layoffs and cutbacks and relationships relationship breakups and frustration all these things to get you to lose your joy but if you don't get your joy back you're not going to be able to endure it says for the joy that was set before him let me show you how to do it this is how this is how you do it. Jesus now is about to be crucified Jesus now is being lied on he's being spit upon he crowned of thorns on his head nails in his hand feet crossed and nails in his feet he gets a focus, hallelujah, of this day. He gets the focus of someone that's watching right now that's about to rededicate or give their life to him. And because he was able to see people choosing him as Lord and Savior, he was able to endure the cross. He was able to deal with the shame. He was able to get through the tough moment. He was able to deal with people mocking him, saying, if you are so powerful, then take yourself off that cross. And he knows, man, I call my dad and legions of angels will come and get me. But because of the joy that was set before him, this is what you have to do. In tough times, you got to hang on to your joy. Get your joy back. Some of you right now need to start praising God. Get your joy back. You need to start praying. Get your joy back. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Number three, you need to carry your assignment. <laughs> Jesus, he's walking down the Via Della Rosa, carrying this cross, so heavy, carrying the cross, which is representing of the weight of the sins of man, carrying this cross. He had to carry this cross in order for God to finish the work in him. Some of you, you don't want to carry a little ridicule. You don't want to carry a little abandonment. You don't want to carry a little lies on you. Somebody lied on you. Now you want to, no, no, no. You just got to carry it. Carry your assignment. It's your assignment. Listen to me. You don't get credit for incomplete work. It's marked incomplete. No grade goes in the book. Don't have an incomplete assignment for a God that's got a complete blessing right ahead for you. Carry your assignment. And number four, as we finish this out, say, I'm surrounded. Come on, do that. I'm surrounded. Come on, say it, say it, say it, say it. I'm surrounded. Come on, say it, say it, say it, say it. I'm surrounded. Here, how can we say we're surrounded? The, the scripture says that we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. I'm surrounded by greatness all around me. I'm surrounded by God's help. I'm surrounded by, by God's love. I, I'm surrounded by God's assistance. Jesus was able to pray to God and realize even though he was challenged in that moment, he was surrounded by God's protection. This is how we overcome the toughest moments in our lives and I pray as some of you right now that are watching this see that it's possible with God all things are possible before we go I want to ask you this question if I could have everybody that's here just stay right here because you know how important this day is I need people praying all over this world right now I want to ask you this question where are you 
Where are you in your relationship with Jesus Christ? If you say, Pastor Campbell, I'm not saved, but I need to be, I want to include you in my prayer. If you say, Pastor Campbell, I was living for Jesus, but I walked away. Will you include me in your prayer? I absolutely will. But I want to know who I'm praying for, and more importantly, who's choosing heaven on this day. So if that's you, will you type, that's me? If you're not in position to type it, just put it in the atmosphere. Just say, that's me because God know who's choosing him today. And I just want to know who I'm praying for. There you go. Oh, this is the great day. This is the best day. Type, that's me. Don't finish this day out with having Jesus. Say, I'm lost. Say, I, I don't have him. I know about him. If you're not living for him, if he's not Lord of all, you need to be included in this prayer. So those of you that said, that's me, would you repeat after me and believers all around the nation, will you support them in prayer? Say, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your love and your life. Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior. Teach me how to live an overcoming life for you. I confess I'm changed, I'm saved, I'm forgiven. I'm free in Jesus' name. Will you say amen? Man, can we celebrate them for the greatest decision that they've ever made to give their life to Jesus or rededicate their life? Hey, I said I'd do two things. The second thing I want to do is give you an opportunity on this day to choose this church. I'd be honored to be your pastor, to serve you with humility and integrity, to teach you the simplistic word of God so you can live an overcoming life. So whether you're a part of our local assembly or nationally or internationally, and you want to be a part of Faith Nation to join this church, what does it take to join this church? Simply wanting to be here. So if you want to join this church today, I want you to type this go for it. Come on, type that out. Go for it. Yeah, this is our year to go for it. And we want you to go for it with us. We want you to receive everything. There you go, y'all. But go for it. We want you to receive everything that God has for you in this time. And I want to just partner with you in faith so God can do amazing things in your life. So congratulations and welcome to the family of Christ for those of you that chose Jesus. And welcome to the TFC family and Faith Nation for those of you that joined our church today. Uh, you should see a link right now that you can click on. And uh, it's some free information that you receive for giving your life to Jesus, but I need you to fill out this card, all of you, um, so we can connect with you on this week. I pray God's best blessings over you. I pray favor, miracles, open doors, and I just pray and declare and decree and declare that this is your moment to live beyond tough moments. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that we're blessed. I thank you that your grace is on us. I thank you that you love us. I thank you that your power keeps us. And I thank you, Father, that we embrace all the finished work of Jesus Christ in this day. In Jesus' name we say, amen. Have an amazing week. God bless you. Happy Resurrection Sunday.